welcome to the world famous Bouchard Gardens of Victoria, British Columbia. The gardens were started in 1906 and contain several different gardens, including the Japanese garden, which we're going to highlight in this video. A million people visit this garden every single year. It's the major tourist attraction, the number one tourist attraction on Vancouver Island in the city of Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. And on its 100th anniversary in 2004, it was designated by the Government of Canada as a National Historic Site of Canada. The Japanese garden itself was designed and began in 1906 and was designed by Japanese landscape designer Isabura Kishida. And within a few years, by the 1920s, some 50,000 people a year were visiting this garden. On a personal note, I first visited this garden way back in 1970 when I was about 10 or 11 years old, and I really don't remember very much about it. So it's almost like seeing it for the first time all over again. I am now touring it with my wife of 33 years, who's kind of the star of this show. She's the one in the pink uh, outfit, the pink top. And uh, I am uh, an older gentleman and a grandfather. A lot of water has passed under the bridge in my life. The Japanese garden in the Bouchard Garden was planted in 1906. And there is only one Japanese garden in all of North America that is older than this one. And that is the Japanese garden in San Francisco that dates back to the middle 1890s. We are now descending into what used to be a rock quarry where they mined limestone to make cement. So it was the vision of Jenny Bouchart, the wife of Robert Bouchart, who owned the quarry and the adjacent cement plant, to turn this scar on the face of the earth into a beautiful garden. So to fulfill her dream of a Japanese garden, Jenny Bouchart hired a noted Japanese garden designer. And here are the results of her dream. Surprise around every corner. The path ambles and strolls, forcing you to slow down and enjoy the sights along the way. Japanese garden is not made to be rushed, but to be savored and enjoyed. Vantage points, focal points, unique vistas around every corner. A canopy, cathedral of trees overhead, a carpet of moss, a sprinkle of ferns. Of all kinds, cyclamens, hyacinths, helabores. Following the trail and the stream down into the what used to be a quarry. A blight and a blotch on the earth turned into a most peaceful, tranquil, idyllic, idyllic garden setting.
sun filtering and dancing through the foliage, sprinkling its shadows and light patterns on the leaves below and on the rocks and everything. In this garden, one sees all the important elements of a Japanese garden, water, rocks, and trees. Hundred years, 120 years of pruning gone into this garden. Mysteria. Japanese met forest of Japanese maples, these are palmatums. Fatsia, Aurelia, Japonicas, Skimias. Lovely pine with the uh, sun filtering through it. Here's the other side of it. I have been privileged to visit many Japanese gardens in many countries on several continents and various states of the U.S. and this is definitely one of the most beautiful ones. A pine with a Styrex japonica, Japanese snow bell behind it. With some lace leaf maples contrasting crimson against the uh, background of the pond. Looks like a, um, an impressionistic painting by Monet, Manet, Renoir, Lautrec, one of those uh, French impressions artists from the late 1800s to early 1900s. Natural Impressionism. So beautiful. Mm -hmm. This is a very cluttered Japanese garden. It makes me feel better about my Japanese garden, which is also very cluttered. There are many different kinds of Japanese gardens, and some are more cluttered and packed full, and others are more open and spacious. And you see this in Japan as well. Many different kinds. So let's look at it from the other direction because the light is different when we come this way and we meet somebody in the path. Mm -hmm. like Go ahead. I'm actually taking it from both sides because each side has a little different view and lighting configuration. So yes, every angle of a Japanese garden has a different perspective, a different vantage point. It's... To say that this Japanese garden is packed full would be an understatement. Literally, it is a menagerie of, of foliage, of colors, of streams, of running water, of trees, of rocks, literally it just almost, it's almost cognitive overload. There's so much to see, so much to absorb. Uh, we spent uh, four hours in the entire Bouchard Gardens, probably two of that uh, in the Japanese garden alone. The admission fee to the Bouchard Gardens is a little bit under $40 Canadian, but it's worth every penny of it. Oxalis. Look at that. We visited this garden in the month of May. Everything was blooming. And what's really cool is that you can take bus 75 from downtown Victoria and it is an hour ride for $5 out directly to the Bouchard Gardens. The firs, the cedars, the other trees are beautifully manicured and kept clean. I don't see any you know, little or no dead wood up there. 
everything is well maintained and preserved from top to bottom. While this type of Japanese garden is might be considered a strolling garden, there are a few gravel areas uh, that give you the impression of a rock or a Zen garden uh, scattered here and there. You have a little Zen garden here, a little raked garden with a with a uh, with a podocarpus tree in the middle. Looks like a little island in the midst of the sea, covered with moss. A little flat garden, or what they call a Zen garden. So remember that uh, Vancouver Island and the area around Victoria is an island. It's surrounded by the uh, Pacific Ocean. And the Bouchard property has its own cove that goes right out to the ocean. So here's the cove lookout. Bouchard Gardens has its own cove. Their own private cove. Beautiful, very idyllic. A little old tugboat down there. Lots of moss. It's a great place for moss. And beautifully pruned Andromeda Pyrus japonica. Pruned in the Sukashi style. Another pond, a little fountain with some beautiful western red cedars, the striations of the, of the bark, the vertical striations of the furrows of the bark pointing your eye upward as the sun filters its way downward. Reflecting on the pool below. Lines, reflection of the tree here. Here's a lace leaf maple. These are palmatum that is just the light is shining, the sunlight is shining on it, and almost like tissue paper filigree. Light shining on translucent. The camera does not capture the nuances and the, the finer details, but this is pruned in such a way so that just faces the sun when it comes right through there and captures the sun. So that when you look at it from behind, it's just literally a translucent, beautiful, uh, I don't know, you see shadows of people walking through behind. Really cool. Haven't seen too many pine trees yet. There's a few here. They need a little bit more sun. Well, this is pruned in the Niwaki style, kind of pom-pom, cloud pruning. The old uh, Bouchard house overlooks the Japanese garden, uh, and the quarry was originally below that. Now it's the Japanese garden. 
juxtaposition of the different textures and colors of the foliage is really phenomenal. Almost everywhere you go in this Japanese garden, you hear the sound of running water. It's so peaceful, it's so idyllic. It's just it kind of almost drowns out the noise of the uh, people in the background. It's just constantly bubbling and gurgling and flowing. Hello, Sandy. I don't know if she planned it that way or not, but her her blouse there totally matches the uh, the beautiful azaleas blooming in the background and, and the Japanese maple behind that. Breaking out into the sun. I think we're coming up to uh, the place where the poppies are at. Yeah, might still be alive. Now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna We are now exiting the Japanese garden, which uh, covers several acres in size. It's quite large. And uh, we're leaving and exiting out into uh, the other part of the Bouchard Gardens, which is uh, just below the, uh, the main house. Once again, as you can see, everything is meticulously manicured. It is absolutely astoundingly beautiful everywhere you look. And here we see the lovely wooden fence that separates this part of the Japanese garden from the rest of the Bouchard Gardens. So as we close out this video, I hope you will enjoy some of the photos that uh, Sandy, my wife, took of various uh, parts of the Japanese garden. Thank you for watching.